How much of a global risk is the energy sector now creating? Jay Morlock from FTN Financials back here on a rise exchange to talk about all of this. I want to start with a little bit of economic data today. First, we've got weekly jobless claims coming in at a five month high. That hasn't concerned you as much as sort of the trade numbers and the import numbers. Yep, absolutely. The, um, the jump in uh, jobless claims, it's a very volatile indicator. It's back up to, yes, a five-month high, but uh, barely usurped where it was two months ago and then four months ago. So it's, it's really it's a not that number. Big. These weekly numbers are all over. And they're the volatile. They're, and the trend is still down, and, and it's still very low. So, yes, we've kind of pushed that aside. Uh, get two or three more weeks of, of it continuing to go upward. We'll pay attention. Um, but really, it's the, it's the drop in import prices, the continued drop in import prices. So we're in between. We're down 9.4% uh, year over year. It's the 16th consecutive month of year over year your drops in import prices. Um, now, a lot of this is energy, uh, which we'll talk about in a second, but a lot of it comes back to the strength of the dollar. So, well. Okay, so strength of the dollar, but does this have any sort of connection to a de deflationary environment? Sure, absolutely. Uh, domestically speaking, uh, it's deflationary. And, and, you know, if you walk through a store, the way I like to think about it, if you're walking through a store, any good from another country is going to be cheaper. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that is deflationary because prices are going down. So uh, domestic manufacturers then have to compete uh, with lower prices from foreign goods, and they have to lower their prices as well if they want to sell goods. So uh, it brings prices down, and, and we see that uh, in our stores. And then it, the corollary then goes that you don't get wage pressure, right, because you can't give people pay raises if you're lowering the price of the products you're selling. Right. Domestically, we're squeezing margins in order to compete uh, both with our exports and then with uh, com uh, industries that we're importing into. Um, so, yes, we're squeezing margins, so it's very hard to turn around and give raises to your employees when you're squeezing margins at the same time. So, you know, we've, we've seen very steady but positive at about 2 2.5% percent wage pressure, but it's hard to get uh, up. Hard to keep that. that going. All right, let's talk about energy sector, which you just mentioned before. Uh, how much of what we have seen with equities over the last few days is related to the price in oil? Jim Awad was on the show yesterday, and he was sounding the alarm bells here that we could be looking at some significant defaults in the energy sector, which could upset the entire global apple cart right now, the economy. It could. And, and so we look a lot at junk bonds. Uh, so a lot of these energy firms released, I shouldn't call them junk, okay? They are uh, not investment grade. Below right. investment below, grade. Below, below B plus. <laughs> right, correct? right. And, um, and they're getting squeezed they, right They've now. been renamed. They've been <laughs> they're renamed. Junk right, bonds. Right. They're junk bonds. They're junk bonds. We won't keep it cordial here. It's, uh, so junk bonds are really getting squeezed, uh, and, and a lot of this comes back to the energy sector. So what we're thinking now, everyone was really hoping what happened this summer, and we got oil back to $60, $65. It's like, okay, we can take a deep breath, uh, you know, where this isn't going to cave. But now that we're back into the 40 range, uh, these companies cannot uh, continue to pay CapEx, employees, and service their debt. And especially U.S. companies, because all these companies went into the fracking industry, which involved a lot of cash to get these goings and borrowed heavily. They borrowed heavily um, and the oil price needed just to keep afloat is 60 for most of them and even 80 to 90 in a lot of the uh, you know more you know junk level companies um, but again they were pricing at hundred hundred and ten dollar oil uh, you know as, as early as last summer so uh, if oil stays down here which it's looking like it is and this week has been you know borderline it's, a seven, catastrophic. it's a seven year low it's a seven year and low every absolutely. day it's sliding at some point you get these technical indicators and they say we broke through 36 we're gonna look at 32 then the floor is the bottom yep and and if it's here they can't service. So what we look at is consolidation. So a lot of these companies are going to have to get bought out. Uh, they're going to have to completely recapitalize. But the knock-on effects with what you were saying before, it's when that happens, it starts tipping dominoes. And, you know, where can we actually kind of stable that yeah, last Yeah, this is domino. a careful balance because as consumers, you like low oil prices. It gives you a tax refund in essence that you can go out and buy more things. You hope consumer spending goes up. But we're at a tipping point, and maybe we're over that tipping point behind the power curve, if you like, where it's no longer beneficial. And when consumers, uh, you know, the other side of that is if consumers don't spend it on something else, uh, if they take this gas savings, savings and they save it, uh, you know, but for a rainy day. In this country. When is that? It's, it's, it's going up. It it our savings rate okay. has been going up uh, in, in opposite of this oil price decline. So what we've seen now is it, consumers are still save, are spending, of course. Um, but if they don't spend dollar for dollar, uh, you know, in another industry, if they are going to squirrel away some of this uh, for a rainy day, um, it doesn't, you know, uh, just completely shift. And it still is going to hit the energy uh, sector. Either. All right, I have you here. We have to talk about Janet Yellen and the Fed and interest rates next week. Is there anything data driven? Is there anything that is going to stop them from raising a quarter point next week? To me, I think everything should keep them. Should keep them. That's what from everybody's not saying. raising rates. Um, you know, so outside of the jobs reports, uh, which again is an important indicator, but it's one of a handful. Can they raise interest rates to save face? Not that they should be in the business of saving face. To save face 
and not have much of an impact? I think as long as they give very, very easy forward guidance saying, look, this was a one-time deal. Do not think this is going to be every meeting or even every other but meeting. If you think they, they don't do anything, how much is that going to spook the markets? I think it could spook the markets in a good way. Uh, you know, I think to me what this did is it, it, it shook out a lot of the fat in the market. Mm -hmm. uh, I think their mission was accomplished. Uh, with the strength of the dollar, it was really the equivalent of about three tightenings. Uh, so what that does is it shakes out a lot of loose ends. Um, and I don't think it's necessary to actually bump the rate, um, to actually tighten credit conditions. If they tighten more, will the dollar go up more? It, it, well, it's, that's, that's already that's, priced in. So that's, that's already we priced in. Okay. That's going to be more or less the, the pace of, of tightening. Mm -hmm. uh, one Tightening is already in the market, so I don't think that'll do much to the dollar. But if they don't go, and what we saw in the ECB last week, uh, when Draghi didn't give as much uh, as, as the market was expecting, the dollar you know, immediately corrected. So uh, if the Fed doesn't go, I think the dollar will weaken significantly. So what you're referring to is the ECB did not um, provide as much stimulus as, as right. someone hoping. Right. Jim Morlock, thank you. Good talking to you. Absolutely. See you Thanks soon. for being here.